In this video, I fix a Honda Vision with a Henry Hoover. While your family are self-isolating, you can do lots of fun things like steal the family Hoover and clean the garage. Hello all. Right, I hope you're keeping well. Okay, day off again. Uh, unfortunately the dreaded Lurgy has arrived and made a very unwelcome entry to our family at the moment. So most are self-isolating, I'm not because I'm clear still, I'm testing twice a day and all is good. However, moving on, Honda Vision, right, it's, uh, I put the wheel in all and got it rolling. Uh, does it run? Hmm. Not very well, uh, fault codes, etc. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. By the way, just really quickly, that's the new bike. I, if you follow the Facebook group, that's the one I was talking about. Uh, just just arrived. Uh, Honda, it's a Honda, a Honda, it's a Suzuki Bergman uh, 400, 2012 non ABS. Yeah, more about that one later. We haven't got time at the moment, uh, but I, I will. I will be bringing that into the channel at some point. Um, I took the opportunity this morning to get the vacuum out and just give my homemade bench a little, let's pull the door down, yeah a little bit of a, a spruce up, get rid of all the rust from Mr Honda, um, the, the whole garage at the moment is just a mess, it's parts everywhere and I'm going to get a new toolbox to go here get rid of my daughter's kitchen. <laughs> I don't know why it's here, but it's here. I thought I could make something of it. Maybe I can. Uh, my bench is yeah, still relatively clear. And I've got a new box of goodies, which I will be showing you today with the laptop. There's a clue. Right. Um, nice new meter, because my other one's buggered. Uh, right, without further ado, let's uh, crack on. Uh, get the bike up on the bench. And... Uh, Let's make it start. Okay. Right, the vision's back in. Um, it's on the bench. Uh, where we left off last time, obviously we just put everything on the front back in. I've got a new battery on order because this one, uh, I'll show you that maybe later. It's not holding a great voltage. It's the original battery. I know at some point in lockdown that battery went down to virtually, not zero, but I think it was something like seven volts or so, but we managed to revive it and bring it back. And it, yeah, it just about starts the bike. It's not brilliant though. Um, when you put a meter on it after starting the bike, turning it off and just see what the voltage drops to, it's about 12.3, maybe slightly lower. It's not great. The more you, ch you know, keep charging it and it, it doesn't seem to come back very strong. So new battery ordered from Tainer Batteries. Um, brakes are all good. Still got no leaks. Nothing at all. It's all good. It's all looking great from last time. Everything is nice. Uh, you need a clue to what I'm going to show you today. You'll see a couple of probes in there. But I'm going to play in the garage this week every evening. Um, when I felt like it. I was actually up to half past 12 last night playing with it. Uh, and I'm going to go through some stuff today. Uh, so it's a little clue as, as to what we'll be doing today. And I shall, without further ado, get on and show you what I'm going to do. We've got some fault codes come up on this bike, hence it's not running very well. Uh, I've got a feeling I know what one of them is. And the other one, yeah, I know what that is for sure. But it'll be interesting just to go through it. And these are not instructional videos. I'll say it again. I'm not a professional. I'm not a technician. I'm not an engineer or a scientist or anything else. But it's just stuff that I've learned over the years. So um, follow what I do at your peril. And uh, that, that's my that's my disclaimer. Sorry, I just picked a board up from the floor. That's my, my, my disclaimer. Um, but if you like just enjoying these videos, seeing what's under the covers of the scooters and getting them going and just, you know, a bit of fun, really. Well, um, yeah, you might like these videos, hopefully. Uh, I managed to steal some petrol out of uh, uh, an old petrol tank that I've got from a an original Honda Vision, which lives in my box in there because I had absolutely no fuel last night when I was playing with it 
Um, hence, I know it runs badly. But I'm pretty confident we're going to sort that today. So, yeah, let's clear the bench. Uh, I've had a little vacuum up, as you will see, and get rid of all the rust from Mr. Honda, and we will crack on. Hmm. This is a good idea. Well, we're going to give it a try anyway. Right, we have a implement. When I was cutting out some old bolts uh, and bits and bobs in the engine, you might be able to see down there, there's quite a bit of metal filing. I don't want to go blowing it out with an airline because it's going to end up in the CVT probably and in the air box. It will find its way in somehow. I'm thinking the vacuum might be a better idea with um, a small attachment and we just try and get what we can out of here. Clean it up a little bit before we start to play with the throttle body and bits and bobs. Let's give that a go. Hmm. Right. Bad idea, I know, but we'll give it a go. Too bad, but that didn't go so well. Hmm. Magnet or an airline? That's a good idea. Let's get an airline. Okay, well, the magnet worked quite well just to finish that job off. And quite a bit of extra stuff out. Brilliant. Let's carry on. Okay, so when I say it doesn't run very well, let me show you. That's off. anyway so you will find out so last time uh, I mentioned HT leads on these I've noticed in the cap I don't think I can get a good shot of that but in that cap there's a little spring and I've noticed a number of them now that I've changed they just seem to go we'll have a look at that on this one I'm going to change the lead anyway to do that it's quite an easy job really uh, a little bit fiddly um, I tend to use a very small stubby ratchet and a little 10 mil on the end and you take off this lower panel which one of these goes here which is an easy job and then I just offer this up very gently as a little clip just in here pop it out and just without cracking your panel, just hold it out. Checking that's off. And there's two little bolts just up in here that I undo and then just take away the whole coil and uh, the plug cap. This plug cap actually doesn't feel like there's a spring clip working at all on that. It feels really loose. I don't think that's the problem with what's going on, but that's obviously something that's needed doing. Let's get on and get that done and then we'll make a start and then we'll move on to the sensors and what I think is the problem. Okay, so I'll just kneel down here. Tucked up under your right hand cover is your coil. It's just there. It's two screws, uh, two bolts, one there and one there. It's a bit tricky to get in here if you're going to take it off but it's easier to take it off I don't know what you can probably see it be easier than I thought okay and there's that on there stubby ratchets are godsend for this
Right, oh, got the bolt out. Nice and rusty, no surprise there. He's not so easy. Head totally in the way of the camera. Meanwhile, right, we're off, I think. Yeah, got me bolt. Right, so the coil will come off two wires. Looks like the black and the white wire goes to the bottom, and the yellow wire with a blue trace goes to the top. Take that one off. Now, because I've pulled the clips off before, when I was doing all the wiring, that will come straight out. There's a little cable tie to cut here to get it off, and then pull your cap off. We are out. Right, let's get this on the bench and have a look at it. The bits you don't see when I'm filming. To get the shot there, I had to get a, a really big bright light in to get some light under that panel. But it was worth it. Anyway, let me quickly show you this. In here, there's a cable tie. This is a throttle body just to the side. You cut that one there and there was a clip that goes in that hole there. Wonder bar. Have a delivery. Don't get excited about this one. Should we do a big reveal? <laughs> People make money out of that, don't they, on YouTube. Today, I'm going to be opening and unboxing some shop towels. Oh, the colour is so nice. Oh, paper. Oh, it's made of paper. Oh, that's wonderful. And that brings the end of the video. I don't know. Anyway, it's just some shop towels. I just buy them in bulk. Don't get excited. The exciting stuff is still to come, kids. Stay tuned. OK, so we've got this coil off now. I'm going to replace this lead and the plug cap. I got my box of uh, <laughs> these are my Honda consumables for my vision basically I just keep everything I need to keep the bike going really like uh, brake piston and caliper kits fork seals spark plugs throttle position sensors all sorts of junk in there just the stuff that I find that I've used and needed brake pads all that sort of give a little stock of it right and um, I've got some seven millimeter Spark plug, HT lead. Now I didn't find the other one, so there is a box of that somewhere around here in the garage. However, let's crack on. Uh, not going to bother taking it off the spark plug end. Let's just wind this off. These can be quite tight, by the way. Not even really doing very much. Okay, that might be there. Yeah, there we go. I think that's better. Right, we're out. Yeah. Um, that boot will probably just pull off. Let's get a, well, let's get a screwdriver of some sort. A little flat-headed one, just to see if I can just lever that rubber boot off carefully. Now you see why it's easier to get it off the off the bike and do it, I guess. Yeah, there's a lip on there, like a, a groove. A groove in there and a lip on there. Right, we need that. Mustn't throw that away. Oh! When I actually look up in there, I can see the spring clips missing. I did say that before. I don't know why that happens. But it does tend to. Anyway, that's all junk now. Um, I can reuse that clip. Um, there, if I cut that off, there, sod it, let's just go for it, there we go, pulled it off, lovely, right, now, all I really need is to be able to feed a cable tie through there, so I can just nip that off, and 
I reckon that might even pull through. Yeah, it does. That is a cable tie clip. So probably it would have opened, but hey, it doesn't matter. It's off. Got part of my clip, and all I can do, I can just put another cable tie straight through there. And just use that to secure. Perfect, that's that one. Right, let's take that spark plug end off. Twiddle it round. Right, so if I measure that, let's, let's get rid of the rubbish. That one's gone. Oh, we cut a bit off of there. So we need to measure that as well. That can go, that boot we need. Let's have a look what we got here. Just chuck that up out of the way. Right. So we need that much to there. And then make it about the same length. It's about there. Right. I don't suppose it's so critical, but there we go. Right, that can go. piece of sleeving. This is really simple. It's got to cut this square. I'll do and that's cut fairly square as it is. Lovely. Right so all we need to do is feed this through the piece of sleeving. This wire. So I've got each end. Brilliant. Put the boot on one end and put the plug cap on the other. Aha, the plug cap, right. It's an LD05F NGK. There are other plugs available, of course, and plug caps, I'm sure, but I just tend to use these. Right, we've got a boot on one. Hmm, could do something a little bit snippy. Tiny little bit of silicon lubricant, let's try that. Okay. There we go, that's done the job. Slide that on. Wonderful, there's a bit more paper. Goes on to the right, okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. Bit of that around. Okay, so the idea is just to screw the screw in there, oh, as you can see of that, onto that piece of wire there. So. And keep screwing till it stops, Captain. There we go, that's screwed up. Right, that's that end. Next. So that boot just slides on that. Quite easy by the looks. We've now just got to connect the screw thread in there into here. Let's get some contact cleaner. Just give that a little clean up in there. Yep, looks all right. Slide that down. So the boot's on nice, I've got my new length of cable, my new plug cap, uh, everything's good in the woods, or good in the hood even. Um, right, little boot goes on there. Let's pop that back on the 
scooter and see how we go. I'm going to clean them contacts up quickly. And a quick little go over. And the other thing is it uses the frame to uh, to, for an earth, so just clean them up as well. In other news this week, I've had some lovely new buses to drive, which has been fantastic fun. Clean up. Right, we're done. Let that dry. Let's get it back on the bike. Right, another thing I've noticed, um, the two contacts for the coil, the two electrical connectors, they get a bit green and snotty. Uh, could do with a good clean up. They've all been like that. I, I, I've noticed all the visions that I've had have all gone like this. It's just, I guess that's actually, it's not that covered up from the elements really. They just get a bit snotty. But um, I'll give them a clean up and you can see the two mountain points, one here and one here for where the coil goes. And then it just connects here for the lead as well before it runs down into the engine, into the spark plug here. I think looking at the rust in there, I'm going to use some... Um, everything rust, I mean, let's, let's be fair, it's, it's just steel, isn't it? Uh, you're, not, you're not going to use stainless steel bolts on every single thing on a bike where you're charging two and a half grand for. So I think I've got some stainless steel uh, bolts. I think I'm just going to use a couple of these, so look at the size difference. Yeah, they're a bit bit too small but they're a little bit bigger but I don't suppose it'll make much difference. A pair of them then. Let's get this put in. Right that's all back in. Uh, the two clips, cable tie clips, one here, one here. I just took out the old original cable tie and put a new one in and it runs under the crankcase breather pipe. And then if I just come around the other side you can see it going down Hang on, where are we? Uh, no, we're not there. Where are we? Uh, we're there. There we go. It's here. It's your plug lead. Can't really see a lot there, can you? But there we go. So let's... Um, oh, wrong hand. Let's just start. I don't know if it'll run any better, but we might be able to... Yep, success. Right, so that works. That's one job down. Yeah, I know what that is. All be revealed. We have an engine management light on, people. It's time to have a look at that, I think, and see what's going on. Okay, time's getting on today. Uh, still light outside, though, which is nice. Uh, right. There is a problem with some of the sensors on this scooter. When I bought this scooter, I remember um, coming out to my mate Helio who owned it before me and he had a problem with a VS sensor. We did a, a scan and I've just had a look in here in the plug for the VS sensor, which is right next to the variator box. It's under this plastic cover here. I'm not gonna put a lot of time into this one because it's an intermittent one that keeps coming up and going, uh, but it, it, I found it, I think. The plug basically was a bit, a bit dirty, and I've got I've got a, uh, a little head torch on, so I can just sort of light this up a little bit for you. Nothing to see really. Clean that up. I clean the connector up. I'm going to pop that back on, and we'll see if it reappears again. I don't think it will, if I'm honest. It did look uh, like we found a possible culprit. Apart from that, it worked fine. So I'll reconnect that back up. Next thing I'm going to look at now is we know there's another a fault uh, that. Obviously, I'm keeping from you at the minute. I'm going to go in. The probes are a clue as to what I'm going to be using to sort this out. But just before I do that, let's take this head torch off. Right. Um, short circuit lead or whatever you want to call it, a Honda plug lead, plugs into the, the red socket under here, uh, which is right next to the, the battery box and all. Um, at the moment, you'll see something different I've connected on there. This is a it's a SuperConnect H01 from ECU shop. Uh, basically, what that does is, if I bring my phone out just quickly, I might give you a screenshot of what, um, what it'll actually do. There's an app on your phone, and you click on it, 
and it brings you up a display for your bike uh, basically it, it's like a speedo on there an rpm meter throttle position sensor all this sort of stuff if i turn the bike oh drop, drop your phone if i turn the bike on you'll see on here that the little bluetooth signal where can i go here here comes uh it connects the bluetooth and you can click on it and then you can do stuff uh like read the font codes and stuff so let's interestingly just tap it and see what it says yeah tps sensor there we go right so this does work but for the sake of doing it the the, the normal honda way without the computer and everything i'm gonna show you uh I'm sorry, it's not not a tutorial video it's just i'm gonna show you the steps that i go through to find folk codes if you want to hang about and watch a bit more we'll use the traditional honda lead down there and with the uh with the the ECU light up here and we'll see what happens great all right well let's uh, get set up and uh, we'll crack on just had a thought people if you want to know a little bit more about this gadget this little ECU shop super connect I bought it from WeBike in Japan I think I paid just under 100 quid for it. I don't know now it might be less than that. I'm not sure anyway if you want to see a bit more about that and what it does uh, then I just leave it just you know something in the comments or something if you're interested if not well don't um right onwards so the leads plugged in we'll have a look and see if we can get a fault code i've put that on the short short circuit and let's turn the ignition on um right, let's turn the power on and we'll see if it flashes at us and what we get right one two three four five six seven eight right so it flashes at you eight times there are eight short ones if it's a long flash it means ten if it's a short flash it means one i think so i'll have a look in here but i'm pretty sure it's going to come back throttle position sensor and then what i'll do is uh I'll get set up now and we'll do a reset to see if it's just a reset needed for this. If it's not a reset and it doesn't run any better and the fault code's still there, well then uh, we'll start looking elsewhere. So with all that junk and jazz cleared away, uh, this is a little lead I made up. It's nothing flash. It's a switch on one end, on and off, and it's uh, a couple of probes on one end for a uh, back probes so if you're probing um, uh, ECUs and stuff like that and sensor blocks into a pair of banana plugs basically when you click that onto one it makes a short circuit the reason I've done that is when you do a throttle position sensor reset on a Honda Vision uh, you have to short circuit uh, this one which is the engine well, it's ECT they call it but it's actually a uh, it's the oil temperature sensor, which is just just there, okay? So you basically you take the plug off, you put them probes into that plug, and then you short it out, uh, and while you go through the procedure of doing it. Uh, I'll plug them in, and I'll go on the other side of the bike, and then uh, you'll see what I'm doing. You'll see what I'm doing, just to reset the TPS. It's quite easy. So with that done, let's... Oh, scroom that out uh, go around the other side quickly and I'll show you how to set or how yeah how to set up the throttle position sensor it's really easy you take your switch that is now on so basically that's shorted out okay so all we got to do is make sure this one which is on the diagnostic plug make sure that's on number one as well and you'll get a flashing uh, code let's get my handy step that up you'll get a flashing code up on here and basically within a few say i think it's 10 seconds you have to de-short that lead okay so i'll show you what i mean i just turn on the ignition right it will start to flash right now you've got to turn the switch off for the short within 10 seconds right now watch how it changes there you go it's changed so that's now set let's turn it off uh, let's disconnect the short circuit lead from the uh, oil temperature sender 
pop that back onto the bike don't forget to do that and then obviously with this one you got to clear the fault code as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take that out now from the plug I'm going to clear the fault code with this one and then we'll try the bike and we'll see what it goes like and see if the fault code is gone right one second okay that's the oil temperature plug back on now I'll come around the other side of the bike again so we have to now get rid of the fault code I'll go up onto my handy step ladder so that you can see the display on the bike so what you've got to do is at the moment the plug is short circuited on the diagnostic plug so you switch the ignition on it will flash the fault code and then you basically off on and turn the ignition off and that should clear the fault code so I'll show you what I mean so that will now flash away merrily with the fault code and then you just go off on and then turn it off and then if you turn the ignition back on now with obviously this is now short circuited that should just stay on which it does you turn it off again turn this diagnostic plug off just to save you disconnecting it and when you come up to here when you turn that on there you go your engine management light comes out so now we're ready to try the bike again and we'll see what happens if I just come down the ladder and yeah still not running that well no it's not running that well right okay Right, let's see if that engine management light has come back on. So, ignition back on. Start the bike. Yeah, engine management light is back. Right, let's do the next step. Um, let's have a closer look. Okay. Okay, so with a lot of these sensors, uh, it's good to see what's going on with the voltage. You could use a multimeter, not a problem. Uh, and it would tell you something, but I've learned with these uh, throttle position sensor, for example, you need to see voltage over time. I've got a Pika scope. Uh, it was a guy, Mechanic Mindset on, I think it's Darren on YouTube. I've been watching his videos. I'm not an expert, I'm learning all the time, but this is a good piece of kit and it does exactly what I want. I will probably never ever use it to its expanse that it can do. But for me to plug it in and look on the laptop and see what's going on uh, when you open throttle, for example, or when uh, a, a coolant temperature sender, this sort of thing with the VS sensor on, on this bike, for example, you should be getting a nice square wave. You can have a look at it and see what's going on. So this was a worthwhile investment for me. Um, I'm going to try recording now and showing you what I've been playing with this week and show you what the problem is. Hopefully. Let's see. Out for now. I've always wanted to do this. Okay, the coffee's gone. <clears throat> right. So I put the picoscope in. It goes straight into your USB on your laptop. And there it is, merrily. I, I will try and do this on screenshots. I know I've learned this week how to record the screen. So I'm going to try and do that as we go to show you on the screen what's happening. Uh, you plug your cable straight in across to the bike. Um, and that is a little pin probe and it goes into the wire where the sensor is. This crocodile clip, by the way, is purely just going up to my multimeter so that you can see the voltage there. But obviously with the multimeter, all you see is voltage at present it won't pick up any changes in voltage which is why I've got the picoscope uh, and that's obviously just earthing out on the battery and the picoscope earth uh, is earthing out on the main earth point of the bike there so there's three three wires on this throttle position sensor there's uh, a plus five volt in there's a ground which is zero volts and then you've got the signal wire which happens to be in the middle I think it's a in the middle on a lot of them actually so I've basically just back probed in the middle I'm going to try and zoom that in I don't know how you'd see any more actually we'll just have a look there you go so I'm I'm probed I'm back probed on the middle wire and I'm basically just picking with the crop clip just picking the voltage off of the probe so what I'll do now is I'll turn the bike on and then we should get a signal coming through onto the oscilloscope on the screen. We'll turn the multimeter on. 
<laughs> right, anybody who knows about throttle position sensors? Have you guessed what the problem is yet? Because I spotted it already. I've just looked on the multimeter and I've spotted it. <laughs> However, there we go. Right. Well, let's explain. Okay, right, let's have a go at this. Um, lots going to be going on here now. Oh, first time I've done this. Right. I'm going to record using as a Windows game capture thing to capture what you can see and I will then build it into the picture that you're seeing now. Um, the multimeter is really just there for for no other reason. I mean, this one you could diagnose easily. The reason being is most throttle position sensors, uh, as you open the throttle on the bike, uh, in the closed position, they start off at about 0.35 to 0.545 volts. As you open the throttle, the voltage rises to about four and a half at wide open throttle. So if you open and close, you get an up and a down. I will try and build in little videos to show you. Because this is showing us it's got 3.16 volts already, that's the problem. So obviously there's something inside that sensor that, uh, that's gone badly wrong, which is why it's emitting three volts and not 0.35 volts. However, I digress, let's get on. So I will open up this screen Windows button and G and that brings up the capture thing so click on the capture and that is now recording brilliantly so if we just come down to the picoscope click on start now I've set this up on two seconds of division so that we hopefully are going to get a nice curve up a nice curve down if it's a good sensor if not we'll just capture along the screen and we'll see what it does what I'm going to do obviously it's all connected up I'm going to open uh, the throttle up and close the throttle, open it, close it, and we'll see what sort of voltage it gives us and see what's happening here. Right, so start the capture. Open it. And close it. And then we'll open it. And we'll close it. There we go. And we'll stop the capture. Just there. And I'll stop recording. And then I'll just clip and put all this in as I can so you can see what's going on. Right, so you can see on the screen here, I will now put this up on the screen so that you can see it. This is not a sliding scale. Obviously on, on the axis up the side here, you've got the voltage and along the, along the bottom, you've got time. You can see it's not a nice, easy uh, <laughs> thing to look at this really straight away. It's not a nice, steady 0 0.3, 0 0.45 volts to start. It doesn't go up to four and a half volts or five volts. It doesn't come down again. You can see it's stuck at three volts, dips a little bit, up a little bit, dips a little bit. But the interesting thing is the voltage actually drops when uh, you open the throttle and it should be the other way. It should go up. So I would say that throttle position sensor is pretty dead. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go straight ahead and we'll put a new one in. I'll do the reset procedure off camera because you don't want to see all that again. And then we'll just try on the oscilloscope and we'll see if we get a proper reading and see if the bike runs properly. Something just crossed my mind. What am I saying? You might actually want to see me change a throttle position sensor. I'll try and work on this side of the bike anyway. Um, yeah, all right. Okay. Trot one's a cold start solenoid and then the throttle position sensor sits just underneath it. Uh, it's only one little screw that holds it in, it's a Torx, it's a T25, right so what I usually do is I take the top plug off the cold start solenoid first and get that out of the way, just tuck it out of the way, and then they've got the uh, the under one, now I've left the probe in here, if I, if I just take that wire off, I'll just leave that back probe in there, I'm going to take the socket off for the throttle position sensor. It's just a, a squeeze affair, you basically just squeeze the side and it pops off. There's your three pin plug, let's get that one out of the way. Just fold him down there. I'll show you take that back probe out but we'll leave it right. These aren't done up tight. One little Torx bolt, just pop that in, crack that open. Let's screw that out, there we are. Little Torx head screw, just put that on the floor. These literally just pull off, they're one screw and they pull off, just, there you go, he's off. There it is. You can see there's a slot in there. And you'll see down here is, there's, um, uh, 
like a little bit sticking out that would go into that slot uh, in there. Basically, so you just line it up and push it back on, and there's your plug. Oh, actually, that's got half that thing missing on that plug as well. I wonder if that's something to do with it. Looks like there's a bit come off of that, just there. Right, I've got a new one over here in a box. Let's put that in. Okay. Honda like you to buy the whole throttle body. But you can get the sensors and you can buy them separately. I didn't tell you that. They're only about 15, 16 pound each. They're a very nice company in Thailand. And if you were clever there, you'd have taken a screenshot and got a picture of it from where they come from. There we go, nice and new. Exactly the same. It's the same as one of a Honda Grom, actually. There we go, or an MSX. So you basically just, so I can just get my head in here. You just line the slot up with the pin and push it on like so. Then all you got to do is take your screw, put that in, line it up, and you're good to go. You can't see a lot, no. Just my hands. Right. Is that done up? Yeah, that's done up. Right, let's nip that up. Don't need a lot, people. Just a little, a little nip. You're only holding plastic anyway. Right, that's done. Pop your plugs back on. Do your reset. And you're a winner. Okay, so confession time. <laughs> There's a little rubber rolling in the O-ring in there. And uh, yeah, I guess you forgot it. So I've taken it back off. And then because you take it back off when you slide it onto this inside the sensor, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't fit very well. It's a sod because it stops the sensor from seating back. So what I've done is I've just taken off the cold start solenoid off the top, which is here. Uh, and that's got a little o-ring too. Right, that's just two screws, just pop that one back in. Things don't always go to plan, I suppose. Very easy to fit though, but they're just one of those fiddly little things that have got big fingers like me, and when you're Jags are bleeding like this at the moment because of the cold and because you're constantly washing your hands because of the threat of COVID. Uh, you get incredibly sore. And because I'm jumping on and off the double decker buses all day and using antibacterial wipes all day to sanitize the next one you go to. Uh, that's not helping the skin either. So hence out a bit painful today. But no big deal, no pain, no gain. Off for a KFC in a minute. I'm just holding that socket in, by the way, just in and turning it with my fingers, just as an easy way of getting these in. Right, they should be ready just for a little nip up. Again, I'm only tightening up plastic, so I'm not going to tighten these up too tight. They don't need to be. I'm not talked up to a certain setting. And if they are, I reckon it'll be a very low one at that. Okay, so we've got two sockets. You've got the one at the bottom with our little back probe. Let's plug that one in and click. And we've got the one for the cold start solenoid with just two pins. That one's clicked in. Lovely. Right, I'll do the reset procedure for the new throttle position sensor. And then uh, let's see what we get on the oscilloscope, see if we get a normal reading. Okay, so <laughs> that was interesting. I just thought about that. I've just gone ahead and tried to do the uh, throttle position sensor reset with my lead. Forgot, got to clear the fault code first before you program the new sensor. And by the way, with a lot of these sensors, some of them with the throttle position sensors, you tune them with a multimeter until you get the correct voltage. This one, it just sets itself. It's obviously the, the, the closed position on the throttle does it all for you. So. 
Let's just, just clear the fault codes. Right, so short that out, turn that on. It's giving me the fault code off, on, off, and then just check that we've got no fault codes. Yeah, lovely. No fault codes. That light should go out. It does. Right. We've got no fault codes. Um, right. Let's quickly uh, do the throttle position reset. And then we'll see what we get on the oscilloscope. Wonderful. Okay. Right. I've put the short circuit in with the uh, the all coolant uh, sensor. So that's done. That one's on. On. That one's on, on. Let's have a look. That's a slow flash. Turn that one on, it goes to a fast flash. Brilliant. Turn it off. Let's take that out. Reconnect that one. And then we should have a working bike. Let's have a look. That's connected up. Right. Short circuit lead is gone. So now the throttle position sensor is reset. The Honda tool, the SCS tool to get the fault case, turn that off now because it should all be done. And then what we'll do is we'll try and start the bike and then let's open the door so we don't kill ourselves. Right. And we should have a running bike. And then we'll have a look at it on the, uh, the oscilloscope to make sure everything's good. We have no fault code, that's a start. Will it lift? That's my bench by the way. Sounds fixed. Job done. Okay. The oscilloscope's reconnected. Got my ass on the battery, um, got the back probe back into the signal wire on the new throttle position sensor, and I've got my crop clip just picking up a voltage going to the multimeter. We're off, the power is off at the minute. Uh, I'm going to give a mention actually to Gerard Burke, another YouTuber. I learned a very valuable lesson off of you this week, Gerard. Your channel is fantastic, by the way, and I love your content. What I, I noticed about it was what Gerard said was, whenever you obviously do something like this and change a sensor, go back after with the oscilloscope, uh, whatever, however you test it, and test it and make sure you're getting the results. Don't just fit the part and then leave, you know, make sure you go back and test your work. So I'm just going to switch this on now and I'm going to have a look. And straight away, I've got half a volt. There we go, 0.49 of a volt. And if I open the throttle, you'll see it raising up to 4.36. And if I close the throttle, it goes back to the 0.45 I was talking about, well, nearly 0.45, give or take a bit with the accuracy of the meter. So on reflection with the multimeter, it looks like things are working as they should. Let's now put the camera back on the stand and I'll go and record it on the oscilloscope and we'll see. And I'll try and put the results up on the screen. OK, um, what I'm going to do is... This is all set up now. I'm going to try and bring up Windows and G. Right, show the captures. Right, I'll start to do the capture now and I'll trim this down. Right, we're recording on the oscilloscope. So I'm going to start the oscilloscope. What I'll do is I'll open it quicker and then I'll open it slower. And I'll try and show you with the results, putting it on the screen again. So if I just start capturing, I'll open that quite quick. And I close it off again so you can see me going open the throttle, wide open throttle and then close throttle. Then we'll open it slower and then we'll close it slower and I'll go back and I'll twitch that off. Right, so on that screen I'll probably take a picture of this now if I can. Let's have a little look. Yep, screenshot saved. Brilliant. So I can put that up on the screen and explain to you. You can see uh, from what we've just done, that there isn't any uh, uh, spikes, there's no voltage spikes, there's a nice clean up signal and down signal, if you like going up the voltage over time, wide open throttle and going down again. So that looks to me like it's working. 
the other thing you can do with the oscilloscope obviously is you can look at um, to see if there's any inconsistencies that sort of stuff but for the sake of this uh, that to me looks fine I can't see any any voltage spikes anywhere at all along the, on the two obviously that the two uh, signals that I've taken from the voltage position uh, uh, the, the throttle position sensor right so let's close that off a minute then and um, great I'm going to take the tools off the bench disconnect it all and then we'll try and start it again and we'll just make sure that it's all running nice that's the first bit of the video now I'm hoping the sensors are all fine now I've still got to go through the CVT I've still got to do the exhaust I've still got to do uh, put all the panels back on but I think I'm thinking we've got to the bottom of the problem with the uh, with the, uh, the the engine management light. So there's now no, no further problem. Let's just start it up. It sounds all right. Bit of the bench rattling, but at least it's revving up now. It's not not, not refusing to rev up. Probably there's a bit of fuel in there just to get rid of it as well. Great stuff. I'm going to wrap it up here now and get the garage door open before I die of carbon monoxide poisoning. I hope you've enjoyed that one and uh, it's probably going to be quite a long one. I haven't worked out how long it's going to be. Hopefully you're not too bored and uh, I'm going to be doing some more work with this in the future and if you're interested I'll share it with you. Anything you'd like to comment on if you're an expert I'd more than welcome uh, any any, uh, any advice you can give me. I'm Obviously I'm just doing very basic stuff with this Picoscope but I'm looking to obviously grow my knowledge with that. I need to get that garage door open. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it there. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you want to. Uh, leave comments if you want to. And trolls, don't bother, not interested. Out for now. I've always wanted to do this.